and nobody wants that. Ups is talking smack out there. And yeah. get your get your your daily dose of Zerx fittings. It's all ball bearings. Hey guys, we do a lot of work on engine performance upgrades, but we also dabble in suspension components. And I know based on the analytics, all of you were around when Nader's book came out, so you know how the suspension was old even when the Corvair came out. I can't speak for the whole suspension design, but I know there are quite a few points where the bushings bind as the suspension moves up and down. It's almost like they perfectly designed the suspension for when the car is sitting flat, and God forbid you drive over a bump or around a corner. As soon as the suspension moves out of its resting position, those bushings bind, making the suspension feel really bad, and nobody wants that. Now, you should be wondering, how can I fix my suspension, especially when the suspension is a unibody? Well, there isn't really a kit that can fix both the front and rear suspension. You just have to modify your suspension to replace all the offending bushings one by one. But one part you can't modify is the lower rear strut rods, and that's where we come in. If you look at the original rear strut rods, it's not obvious initially how the bushings bind. But when you look at the rear suspension as a whole, you see the strut rod rotates around this axis as the wheel moves in this arc, and the trailing arm rotates around this axis, moving in this arc. When you overlay these two arcs, they rotate 90 degrees from each other, so as the suspension moves up and down, these two arcs move away from each other, applying a ton of torque to both the strut rod and trailing arm. This torque is felt in the bushings, causing them to bind and wear. Now, it should be quite obvious how the spherical joints come into play. What we do is replace the bushing at the diff with a spherical joint. But if you look at the stock strut rod, it's one solid piece. So you can't just buy and screw on a spherical joint. The solution my dad came up with was to replace the whole damn thing. But even when you replace the parts with off-the-shelf parts, you still can't find the lower bushing anywhere. So we fabricate one to work with the replacement rods and spherical joints. To make the outer bushing, we first chamfer the threaded rod to create a nice fillet for welding it onto the housing. And then in our effort for perfection and over-engineering, we stick that threaded rod in the mill and hold the housing with the vise so that we can align both of them perfectly. If any of you have used a mill, you know how critical it is to keep the surfaces of the table and your tools clean. So tacking something on the mill becomes a real headache when you have to cover everything up. That's why we've got a bunch of random blankets and rags and things all over the place. Once they're tacked, it's time to weld them. This is kind of annoying because we've got to build the weld up from this really deep chamfer. So it's basically some welds on top of welds. Next, I'm going to sandblast to get them nice and clean for painting in a little bit. Sandblasting is fun and all, but it's also a real pain in the ass because I've got to get all geared up. Here I'm putting on my mask of ultimate protection, otherwise known as an N95 mask, so they don't breathe in all the dust that I'm blasting at these parts. Also the vacuum is super loud, and the compressor is super loud, so to protect my puny little ears, I've got to wear hearing protection. It uh, doesn't take too long to sandblast, except when the sand isn't coming out, and then the hose pops off the gun that feeds the sand. Wow. Look at these. Yeah. Anyway, welded these on. Uh, that, that, boom, done. Now they're sanded. Now we're going to do this. Yeah. So now we've got to drill and tap quarter 28 for grease fittings. Yeah. Strix fittings. And, and we set this angle the same as the spherical joint angle. Yes. 40 degrees. 40 degrees. Uh, and this is the same, this is the exact same setup that we just did for welding, because we just welded them and all that stuff, so... Yeah, so the uh, mill's set up. The mill was already set up to, to be square with those, with this, square and this guy, and then that guy is now giving us the angle over there. Yes, this fixer 
is holding the angle. This one's positioning along with this uh, half by one bar for to keep height. it yeah, yep. vertically. And then uh, we sandblasted them before we did the ta drilling and tapping because you wanted the holes to be. I didn't want to have. Yeah, I didn't. It's harder to clean the the internal thread. sand out of this because I'm going to use a tap magic on it. Yeah, and it's easier just to do this and then then spray it off as a brake clean and then just straight to paint. And these we're going to need to run a dye on anyway because there's probably yeah. Little, there's little bits of weld in the in way so of weld and stuff. So yeah, we'll run a dye on there. I got so. I'm going to zoom time in. Time to drill. Good. Okay. For now. Get a pilot hole going. Turn the stand on. Just like that. That's it. Pretty perfecto. I probably don't say it often, but machining is actually quite relaxing. There is something so strange about the dichotomy of running a large machine that could easily maim you and shutting your brain off to produce a part that you've made many times. guys oh. we'll take off the uh, the little bit of splatter on there clean yeah. them all up paint them satin black and we've got uh, three types of bushings to push in and a uh, center sleeve and that will be uh, for the outer position mm -hmm. on the car with the spherical joint to the inner yeah that's the grease fitting yeah that's and ready now, to clean the paint uh, we're gonna clean and paint with the holes for those fittings drilled and tapped, I can now paint them all after I clean them with some acrylic clean. This is a uh, really bad way to hang them, and I should have done a little more setup, but it works, and I did another couple of coats later anyway. So with them painted, there was only one thing left to do. Assemble. Okay, so we're going to do an assembly. This one's done. Grease fitting is in. Uh, here's one. The uh, joint is, the spherical joint's in. And this is the left-hand threaded one. The groove on this indicates left hand. This doesn't so this have one. this is the opposite. And that's left opposite hand. way, so that when you put on the car, you turn these both the same direction. To, 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 to do the same Increase thing. or decrease your, uh, your camber. Yeah. So... The you way turn, you're going to put them on the car, you'll turn both the same direction as each other to widen yeah. or shorten depending on what side you put the arm on. It doesn't yeah. matter. But it makes it better when you're laying into the car. Because you push the you're wrench. Down, you, you push, push the wrench push away. You push the wrench to the front. Or, or yeah. you push it to the rear. Yeah, and that's the and same. And you do both the same. Yeah. To widen the track, you know, to mm. more negative or more positive. Yeah. It, it's, trust me, it makes sense. If I, because I used, I, I set, I think I set the 65 up the other, the other way so that both inner ones are left and the outers are right and they're backwards and it's stupid laying under the car. He's like, okay, you oh, I got that. And the you're crawling around and you're measuring, crawl back under the car. And you may face one way, you may face the other. Yeah. And then you 
shit, I hit the wrong Which way. Which direction <laughs> am I going? Yeah. It's really dumb. Yeah, really dumb. So that's why it's the same. So, so now this yeah, is... You couldn't tell, but in the, when we were pressing the things, and this is the, the spacer. That's the center spacer for the, for the Corvette bushings. So they fit our factory width. Otherwise, you got... Yeah. Instead of these little spacers for the inner part, there's one on each on the inner, because of this particular spherical joint, is that's the width you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You'd have to have if you're going to have a little skinny one with the with the narrow ones like the Corvette, you'd have to have big ass spacers in there. Which I went mm, looks let's stupid. Just do it this way. This looks better. Yeah. And this has a groove right in the center, so that lines up when you get the centered. It lines up right with that grease fitting. Yeah. So, so when you pump know. the grease in, it goes through the whole channel, and then I've got two grooves I cut with a cutoff wheel, so it squirts out. Keep the whole thing all lubed up. It's all it's a bunch of little tiny details. Like they say, it's all ball bearings. So this being the left, we're just going to screw that on left, and be, being steel going into aluminum, it always gets anti seize. Yeah. And that way, when you're laying into the car and you're trying to adjust things, it's not all bound up. Yeah. Now, the other thing that the spherical joint allows, this allows for a lot more compliance, and then this is just a, basically a factory replacement of the same, basically what's on the stock one, but it has a threaded rod and it's, uh, you put grease in it. Otherwise the stock ones you can't put grease in. And then you get out your trusty vitamin bottle and yeah. get your, get your, your daily dose of, of, uh, <laughs> Zerx fittings. Yeah. Grease fittings. And in this daily thread. dose of grease fittings. Yeah. Just throw that in. And there you go. Now you can grease your, yeah. your bushings. So one are... set done. I've got uh, this is spacious for, of course, the the yeah. inner point. These always go to the inside. Yeah. And then this replaces the on the factory bolts. Let me get one. Oh yeah. They're right here. Yeah, it's We're an eccentric. Flange. Eccentric. And the and yeah. the bolt is machined to hold the eccentric and. So and it's got notches in it to get different positions and yeah, so you can kind of see where you're going and it and it moves the bar uh, in and out, which is not very much movement compared to this, which can move like well, several inches, and that one can well, move, I don't know like you can move that much inch. because you're going to run out of thread, but you can, it's more than this. Anyway, this replaces this contraption to center the bolt within the bracket on the lower control arm. Yeah. You just get your half inch bolt, two on one side, two on the other. This fits in if you got to do any touch of grinding or whatever to get it, depending on your, how your, your arm is welded together. Yeah. Just do that. And if you want to paint, you can paint them. Yeah. So it gets rid of this. Your adjustment is now this. It, it fixes the, the compliance. This issue. is inner. Yeah. This reduces, this reduces compliance. This is the outer. So it, it squares that up. So you just do your adjustment here and uh, a wrench is available. Yes. It's an option if you want. I mean, these typically, you know, you you can do it by hand, but... And uh, because this has got some compliance, it's not rigid like this. As the control Whoa. arm goes up and down, yeah, my originals had uh, this fabricated on both ends, which worked really well, except short of it sitting in your garage, when mm -hmm. every time you drove it, one of these nuts would always loosen. Yeah. And that's because... No matter how tight you tightened them, as the suspension moved up and down, there was one a, would tighten, the other one would pop loose. Well, there would be loose. There's a torque. Yeah, this, on there's these a torque to rotate on these. these. Be, and because the trailing arm is moving up and down. Because the trailing arm is moving up and down, and, and the an geometry arc. of it doesn't allow this to just pivot with it perfectly. It just no. It can't. It can't when these are when these are more rigid. When those are rigid. So this has got it the, ends up that if this is rigid, it'll actually unscrew this. That's why the factory ones are solid. Yes. Because it can't, it can't, it can't un undo itself. Do itself. Yeah. But what ends up happening is the bushings go bad. They because, just wear the bushings out because it's constantly under this torque. Yeah. Putting because force there's on no the compliance bushings. in the bushing. Yeah. There's, it's, it has some squish to it for, mm -hmm. for ride quality. But, but it, as far as handling. Yeah. So this, reduces the wear in these components. It also makes it so you can grease them so they last a lot longer. And the adjustment is much, you have much more adjustment and a much, you know, finer, really accurate adjustment. Yeah. Oh yeah, much more accurate than that yeah, bolt than you that gotta pull on. Bolt, yeah, you gotta yeah. pull on and 
screw around with that. Yeah, so this is much yeah. more accurate. So you get it really set up well on a, on alignment rack. All so right. that's it, guys. That's it. Just a Sunday afternoon laying around. Yep. All, All right. right. Adios. Adios.